Greetings, my name is Purba, and in this video I'd like to give an overview of a hobby project of mine. It's an app that serves as a player assistant when playing the board game Gandhi from GMT Games. The app is called Gandiba. You may be familiar with an earlier player assistant app that I created called Zalon for Fire in the Lake, another game in the series. If you are, you will find Gandiva to have a very similar look and feel. The main points of difference are in the setup screen and in the way you free up forces for reuse. Gandiva is not a digital version of the game. There is no map. It's intended purely as a supplement to the physical board game. In bullet point form, the features of this app are an automation of the non-players, Gandhi is intended for up to four players. It has an innovative system called Arjuna that instructs how to direct the actions of one or more opponents. The app is able to use Arjuna to fill in for one or more non-players. Two, the player turn assistant. By only showing valid play options, the app helps the player to focus and speeds up the building of their move. And three, the app can assemble a card deck or let you enter your own cards as you go. The intention was for the interface to fit on a phone size screen of at least 5.4 inches so that it doesn't intrude on the board game setup like a laptop would. I haven't tested this on anything smaller. OK, time for a demo. The first screen that we see on opening the app is this one. At the top you can see three tabs. The display tab is where we drive from. The second tab shows the state of the board and the third archives past terms. We'll look at each of them shortly. The setup action in the play tab at the bottom takes us to this screen where we can choose the scenario we're playing, toggle the faction that we're running and how the card deck will be built. There's a couple of points of difference from Zolon here. Gandiva supports anywhere between 0 and 4 human players and will puppet the remainder using Arjuna. So, whether you want to play Gandhi solo, running just one faction, or to play four-handed solo, or you just need a non-player to round out your gaming group of three, Gandiva can be of use. You have a choice of letting the app generate your card deck, or building your own and entering the card numbers as you go starting with the first three cards here. Let's choose to play the Raj faction and enter our own cards. When we submit and accept our settings, the button now says Begin. At this point, let's switch to the Board tab. What you see here is a simple listing of map spaces from the board and the contents and status of each. You'll see the control and support status whether there are unrest, strike, protest or Muslim state markers, and the forces present. Along the top are the values of the four victory markers, resource markers and restraint in unity. Since the revolutionaries are a non-player in this session, their resource marker is not shown. Along the bottom are the eligibilities of each side and the current campaign card. I needed to come up with concise names for the railways to fit on this screen. The name for the cities they connect or the provinces they run past. At this point the board tab is showing the starting setup for the chosen scenario, just like the setup details at the end of the rule book. This can be used to set up the board and personally I find it easier to use than the rule book. Let's go back to the play tab and hit begin. Now the game has commenced. At the top you'll see both the current card and the next one to come. Since I set the first card as card number one, and that has the Raj as first eligible, it's my turn first up. If I tap at the top right, I can view the events for the current and next cards. If I double tap, I can see persistent card effects. I enter my move by choosing options from a series of drop-downs. I'm going to play an operation plus special activity. In this case, deploy plus govern. The app will show you 
only valid options, so that should streamline the process of assembling your course of action. As I pick my actions, they go into a queue. I can undo any of this, or even go back and pick a different set of actions. When I'm ready, I submit to queue. The next screen shows my moves in a scrollable list with operations and special activities color coded. Each of those in turn is laid out as a sequence of single steps. At the end, any victory markers that change during the turn are listed. I can work through this list and update the board. When my turn is over, I press next turn and the next faction has its turn. Here it's run an event. Unlike Zalon, all factions can run both types of card events. You'll see the event title at the top as a newspaper headline. Now it's time to enter the next card in my hand-built card deck. So we need to regularly update the game board with each turn. We have a couple of options. We can move down the list on the play tab and replicate each action on the board. An alternative approach is to move over to the board tab. The map spaces involved in the turn just completed are up the top and in a lighter color. In addition, the top row of the board tab will have the latest changes to its numbers highlighted in white. I use a combination of the tabs, stepping through the individual actions listed in the play tab on the board, and then using the board tab as a quick check. When we get to a campaign, the flow is a little different. The app steps through the faces to the campaign autonomously, stopping to get manual input from your faction at the right points. Then the full campaign transcript is laid out for you. Having run a few turns, let's have a look at the past tab. This stores the screen displays from past turns. It opens on the most recent turn, and we can swipe through to earlier turns. If you want to report an issue, move to the screen where it occurs and press Report Bulk. This will open up your email program with a game snapshot and no personal information. Then just send the email to me. One more thing that I wanted to point out is the way you redeploy forces from the map. It's not obvious and it's different from Zalon. Let's say I'm the Raj and I want to deploy forces to the cities, but I don't have enough in available. I switch to the board screen and scroll across the map spaces. I long press those troops and supports that I want to tag for redeployment. They will appear both in the Raj available space and in the tag space at the bottom. Physically, they are still in their original map spaces. I then switch back to the play screen and continue my deploy. The tag forces will show up in the drop-down, but only if I use them will they be moved from their current space to the deploy destination. If I don't use them, they stay put. The tags are cleared at the end of the turn. In conclusion, I hope this has been a useful overview of why Gandiva is worth checking out. Thanks for watching.